who will get the four minute warning to Riggin Field. Classic defensive struggle between Becton and North Arlington. No score with four minutes remaining in this game. Nelson, end over end. Loose ball, loose ball, but Becton gets it back at the 30 yard line. Mike Hoffman down on, a, uh, on the coverage there. Steve Cooney recovers it for Becton at the 30, it'll be first and 10. Three thirty-three remains. Becton four and zero. The Vikings four and zero. Both tied for first in the national division. They had uh, people had said before the game that uh, the neither team was really you know sufficiently tested before this game. Well, I'll tell you, they're giving each one another a heck of a contest today. First and ten. Murray goes to Brown and. Say hello to Keith Nelson as he makes the stop behind the line of scrimmage at the 26 yard line. And I think you can see why uh, there are quite a few college coaches uh, looking Keith Nelson over. You know, he does so many things well. He goes on the offense, he goes defense, and uh, he's shown he can get the ball away on punts. Vikings have called timeout. We'll be back right after these words from our sponsor. Back to Riggin Field, and no one has left as this crowd. An excellent showing of support from both the Vikings and Wildcats. See people just standing around the perimeter of this field. 303 remaining. And everybody's waiting for that first score. Yeah. <laughs> they got their money's worth today, though. Absolutely. The time is called back in following the Viking timeout. It'll be second down and 12. And they mark the ball at the 29-yard line. Brian Hansen is in there. He's the tight end. Knitchell, the wing back to the right side. Knitchell now comes in motion. Murray looking to throw, looking downfield, looking for Knitchell. He's open, and it's complete at the 49-yard line. John Pirro made the tackle. Well, that gets him moving. <laughs> that woke the crowd up. 2.56 remains. And they start the clock first and 10 at their own 49 yard line. Romalia now checks back in as Dempsey will come to the sidelines. Out of the shotgun, the Vikings showing blitz. Complete to Bobby Brown. Brown breaks away, and Pirro saved the touchdown. There's a flag, There's a flag on a play, Ed. There's a flag in the backfield. Against the Wildcats. See how Brown switched the ball as he was heading towards the defenders? Yes, nice move. Notice the blocking too uh, on that play on the, uh, on the offensive uh, men that were down the field. Bechtano will be penalized five yards. It'll be first down, 15 from their own 45 yard line. Referee is so deliberate in his calls. Yes, he really is. It's, nice it's not, yes, he does an excellent job. First down, 2-11 remaining. Todd Knitchell now splits to the near side. Mary on a short drop, being pressured. He's hit, but it's complete. And Knitchell gets it up to the Viking 45. Hoffman made the hit. A minute 50 remaining. Gain of 
Second down, five. They're at the 45 of the Vikings. There you see the Becton offense. Now to the shotgun. Brown, Knitchell, two receivers to the right side. Romalia in motion. He was the lone setback. Mary looking things over. Now he's going deep. And the penalty. He gets on Johnny Pirro. I think they're claiming when he reached over his head, he hit, he hit the uh, helmet of the uh, receiver. Marbez was the intended receiver. It was second down and five, and there's the call from our referee, Hank Konisberg. 117 remaining. First down and 10 for Becton at the Viking 30 by virtue of the penalty. Dempsey is back in there. Romalia and Dempsey are the setbacks. Mary back to pass. Let's it loose. And he caught it. Inside. What a catch. What a catch by that young man. What a catch. Mary being pressured through in a crowd. And Hanson came down with it. Clutch play by Brian Hansen. 106 remaining. First down and goal for Becton. Mary, five for 15, 70 yards. Most of them coming in this drive. Play action, being pressured and almost intercepted. DeRogatis diving attempt falls incomplete. I think on that one, Ed, although we were blocked out just a little bit, I think Gene uh, DeRogatis had the ball for a, you know, momentarily, but his hands were so far away from his body, he just couldn't hang on when he hit the ground. Bobby, you have to be thinking field goal now. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 41 seconds remaining. Block is official. Second down and goal from the nine. Dempsey trying to get to the middle of the field, and he does. May have picked up a yard. It'll be third and goal. And now the Wildcats call timeout. 32 seconds remaining. Welcome back. Bob, there may have been, not been a lot of scoring, but there's been a lot of action here at Riggin Field today. This has been one heck of a football game. People pay a lot of money to go see pros play. I'll tell you, you couldn't have paid any, any amount of money to come see a better game. Right in your own backyard. Pete Murray has put the shoe on. See, the ball is at the 10. Be about a 27-yarder. Now, the other one that he attempted was approximately 30, 30 yards and a few inches short. Can you feel a little electricity buzzing through this crowd? <laughs> I'll tell you, electricity. <laughs> crowd is up. 32 seconds remain. Todd Knitchell with the hold. Here's a snap. Ball is down. Kick is up, and it's good. The kick is good.
Nine plays, 70 yards for Becton. And a 27-yard field goal by Pete Murray. I tell you, that ball, he, that ball could have been kicked from the, uh, from the 40. That had the, the uh, distance and the height. What a game. <laughs> 70 yard drive. The first points of the year scored against the Vikings come off the toe of Pete Murray. Play a game is being called against Becton. I would assume, Bobby, because of the fans running onto the field. Yeah, uh, well, it was most of the players, Ed. It was most of the team players, and it's, uh, he just marked off 15 yards. Against Becton, 15 yards. 29 seconds. And Becton now will be kicking from their own 25-yard line. Murray will kick off. Becton will kick off from their own 25. 29 seconds remain. Becton leads 3 to nothing. Line drive kick. Bounding around, Riggio at the 30. And up to the 42-yard line, and four or five seconds have elapsed off the clock. The clock stops with 23 seconds, and the Vikings now have spent a timeout. We'll stay with you. The Vikings will have first down and 10 at about their own 38-yard line. I would suspect you'll see Mark Collier go to the air. I think so. Uh, if he's gonna connect with a, uh, with a man who has a few steps on a defender, this is the time to do it. But I wouldn't doubt that the uh, Wildcat defenders will drop back and give them that short, uh, the short pass. Let them, let them uh, you know, connect underneath, but keep the man in. 10 at the Viking 40-yard line. Reggio splits wide to the near side. Keep in mind, Renshaw has been open deep. Fires, it's complete to Renshaw. And he tries to get outside, and the Vikings immediately call timeout. And the clock shows 16 seconds remaining. They must be down to their, they must have been there like their last time out. Joe Tosi is the offensive coordinator for the Vikings, has completed his talk with the Viking offense. Kyer back to pass, lets it fly for the sidelines, and Sellers pulled it down, and they stopped the clock with eight seconds remaining. Now they'll wait to reset the chains. It's a first down at the 25 yard line. Come on, there was only 23 seconds left when they took over. Kyer, time has expired. Scoreboard clock shows no time remaining. And that's it. That's the signal. Becton defeats the Vikings by a score of three to nothing, and the record is intact, five and zero, oh, and the Vikings go to four and one. Quite a ball game between these two schools, Becton and North Arlington, and the applause is for the combatants you've seen on the field today. We'll be back.